World War I, and it was the Spanish flu as well. So it was both those things happened at the same time. So life, life expectancy just dropped completely. So let's just go back there. So there you can see it dropping. Um, and you can see, yeah, a lot of people over here. Okay, so we can watch through it again. This is 1920s, 30s. You can see life expectancy getting higher. Um, and again, there was another drop. Anybody want to guess what this drop was? Okay, that was World War II. Okay. Okay, now we can carry on, carry on. And as you can see, life expectancy is getting better. And the average number of children um, that women have is also decreasing. Okay, there you can see China's uh, one kid policy kicked in. Uh, so we can see it's getting better. Oh, yeah. Okay, what we can also do is we can actually track it per country. So let's look at South Africa. If I can just find South Africa here. Yeah. Oh, no. I need yellow. There's South Africa. Okay, so let's go all the way back. And now we're going to look at the income per person. Okay, so we're going to see how much people earn and, how, and what their life expectancy is. So do you think there's an association between how much people earn and their life expectancy? Okay, let's test that. Okay, so there's Africa, or South Africa. You can see everybody is more or less stuck and now we're starting to earn more, but life expectancy is not getting better. Now we're starting to earn less, so we're just moving sideways. Okay, so life expectancy back then was pretty much standard until 1900s. Now it should start to pick up. Okay, there's that drop for, um, for the First World War. Now we can see it's increasing. And you can see it's increasing quite rapidly. So people are becoming healthier, more so than they're actually earning more money. Okay, it increase, increases, and then decreases. There. Um, okay, anybody know why that's the case, why that happened? AIDS, HIV AIDS. So that's what happened. And you can see it, we dropped there from 2015. In 2006, life expectancy was the same that it was in 1970. And that's by how much it actually decreased it. Um, anybody know why it's increasing again? <laughs> why it increased? Uh, because of um, anti-retrovirals. That's exactly the time that we started to increase them again. So this was our, the um, Tabu and Beck administration. They didn't want to implement it. Then we can see the results, life expectancy dropping, dropping, dropping. Then it got implemented, then it increased again quite rapidly. Okay, so that is the result of making decisions not based on evidence. That was the pure result of non-evidence-based decision making. And it resulted in life expectancy dropping by about 15, year, 15 years um, per person. When we went back to evidence-based decision making, um, especially with fighting HIV AIDS, then it increased again. And we're almost back on the level where it was when it was at its highest, which is 1994. Um, okay, so that's just a tool. Um, go play around with it. It's amazing. There's a bunch of different stuff that you can actually um, test there. Okay, so back to the lecture. Let's just see what everybody voted there. Okay, so most people actually said they're independent. That um, life expectancy and the number of children um, per woman is actually independent. Um, so we're not saying one is causing the other one, we're just checking with the association. So if you, after this gap minded thing, do you think there's an association? No, um, there's definitely an association. And it's a negative association. It turns out that um, generally the more children there are for women, um, the lower life expectancy is. Okay, so that's a negative association between those two variables. And it might not be that one is causing another one. 
there might be a compounding factor, something like uh, income per person, because there's an association between both of those. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so the correct answer then is it definitely associated. So the second question is, um, again, was it it's negatively associated? And the ask here is, was the relationship the same throughout the years, or did it change? Um, there was always association, but the strength of that association changes throughout the years. And again, this is why we use samples. You can see that association changed over years, so it's easier to sample a few thousand people than trying to do a census every year to keep up with those trends and us not actually changing. Okay, um, so that is one way of visualizing data, analyzing numerical data, and that way is to just draw a scatter plot of the data, and that allows us to very quickly see if there's trends in our data and if there's association between the different variables. Okay, so that's the basic way of looking whether there's associations between two variables. Okay, so um, the only thing with dot plots is they work when you have two variables, but very often we just want to analyze one. We just want to look at the heights of students, for instance. So the question then is how do we actually analyze that one variable? Um, and one way we can do it is by again doing a, a one-dimensional, not one-dimensional, but straight line dot plot. So what we did here is we looked at the GPA score of a bunch of students, which is similar to NBT. Um, and then we draw a dot for each student's in, um, NBT score. And we make the dot a little bit transparent. So where there's a lot of that dots that's overlapping, um, there's more students that have the same mark because their dots are overlapping. Where the dots are very difficult to see, that means there's probably only an individual student there. Okay, so this is one way that we can visualize um, a single variable value. So in this case, where do you think most students' um, score fell, GPA score fell? It's going to be where it's the darkest. It's going to be there. That's the most dense. That's where it's the most dense. So those dots are overlapping, so they're becoming darker because there's a little bit transparent. Um, and the least number of scores is over there. Okay, so the question then is, how would we describe this? How would we describe the distribution of uh, GPAs in this data set? Okay, so this is one of the learning outcomes, uh, which we'll get to towards the end of the lecture. Okay, so in this case, we can see most of the observations are there. Um, so where do you think the center of our data is? Where do you think the average will be? Um, it's not going to be in the middle of this thing. It's going to be towards where most of the points are. So average is going to be over there. Um, if you look at the shape, we can see most of the points are over in that side. And then they become less and less and less as we're moving to the other side. Okay, so that's just some of the way that we look at the shape. And there seems to be a fairly wide spread between 3 and 4. And then it becomes less and less and less as we're moving to the left. Okay, and um, again, it's, it's not that easy to actually analyze this. Who of you have seen a figure like this before? So like one or two hands. Um, it's, it's quite rare. This is quite a rare way of visualizing data because it's not easy to visualize data like this. Um, so this is not how we actually typically uh, visualize data. Um, but before we go into better ways, uh, what we quickly can look at is actually the average. So the average, again, is our middle point of our data, um, of also called the mean, um, and that is the center of the distribution. Um, and it's the weighted center of the distribution. And the average is the most used statistical measurement that there is and reported, and most abused statistical measurement that there is and reported. But we're still going to use it um, in this course as well. Okay, so in this case, the mean GPA was 3.59. Um, so how we calculate the average is pretty straightforward. All we do is we take all the individual values that we've measured, we sum that, and we just divide it by our total number of observations. Okay, so it's very easy to calcula calculate an average. Um, again, on its own, it's pretty meaningless. So the mean on its own is pretty meaningless. Um, and we'll get to that in the next lecture. Yeah, important thing to note here, and um, we're going to carry, we're going to use this quite a lot, is how we actually define the sample average and the population average. Okay, so when we're referring to the sample average, it's always an X bar on it. So it's a normal letter with a bar on it. So that is a sample average. That means we took a sample and measured the average of that sample. When we're referring to the population average, that is me. So whenever you see a Greek letter, that refers to a population average. So if we're inter interested in the average height of all South Africans, that would be me. 
because that is the entire population. So what we would do is we take a sample and then we would calculate the average for that sample and we denote that sample average as x bar. So just be very careful with that, especially if you're going to start doing hypothesis testing, that when we use mean, it refers to the population average. When we use x bar, it refers to the sample average. Okay. So um, the sample mean is what we call the sample statistics, um, and it serves as a point estimate for the population mean. Um, remember, because we can't do a census, we never have the population mean. We will never know what the average length is of all South Africans in this country. So instead, we take a sample, and then we get the average for that sample. So that sample average is not going to be the same as the population mean. There's going to be a different. I mean, if you take another sample, we're going to get a different um, sample mean. There's always going to be a difference between the two. So the point estimate is never perfect, um, but it is usually good enough. So the whole point of statistics is we're going to use that sample estimate, that sample statistic, then use statistical tools to then say something about the actual population mean. Okay, so what we typically do is we measure x, we measure x bar, the sample statistic, and then we use x bar to say something about mean which is the population statistics of interest. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Again, we're going to work a lot with averages. When it's x-bar, it means it's a sample statistic. and we use